Anyone that has been through narcissistic abuse or had toxic parents or was in a long-term relationship with somebody that was toxic winds up battling toxic shame. And I wanted to talk about that today because in order to heal from complex PTSD, in order to overcome emotional abuse so that you can be happy again and live your life the way you really want, you really have to work through toxic shame. If you've ever wondered if you have toxic shame, then pause and ask yourself the following questions and see if this resonates with you. I don't deserve to be happy. There's something fundamentally wrong with me. I am so screwed up. I'm unworthy of being loved and cared about. Sometimes I wish I was never even born. If I allowed people to get to know the real me, I know that they would look down on me and abandon me. I hate myself. Everyone leaves me because I'm just not good enough. If the feelings that are reflected in those questions resonate with you, and if they show up in different areas of your life, then you probably have toxic shame. So I wanted to talk about this today because not only is it difficult to live life when you have a core that is drenched in toxic shame, but on top of it, we're in isolation right now. And so living with that alone, being alone with yourself when you have toxic shame can be extremely overwhelming. So in this video, I wanna talk about toxic shame. I want to talk about normal healthy shame because there is a, a need for healthy shame. I want to talk about the difference, but most importantly, I want to give you tips on how you can start working through that shame. Because even though you had no choice in the matter when it was put into you, right? As a child, you didn't choose to have toxic shame. Sadly, somebody in your life provoked that in you by the way that they parented, by bad parenting. Maybe your parents, even if they aren't narcissists, right? Maybe they were raised in a toxic environment where they never did the inner work to heal. And when we are not healed ourselves, we wind up passing down to our children the same emotional dysfunction. So sometimes it's because of toxic parents that are just malignant narcissists. And sometimes it's because we had parents that were affected by toxic people but didn't know how to do the inner work regardless of the cause right regardless of the reason we didn't have a say in having that shame there but we do have a say now in what we do with it we accept it as if it's another limb on our body and we live with it or we work through and heal it and i'm hoping you choose the latter because you can live life without that toxic shame tormenting you 24 seven. So with that in mind, let's get started. I wanna first explain the fact that there is healthy shame and then there is toxic shame. And healthy shame is good for us, right? Healthy shame helps us to stay within boundaries of what is acceptable and comfortable within us. It's what helps us to not go to work in our underwear. <laughs> it's what helps us to close the door when we're going to use the bathroom, right? It keeps us within healthy boundaries. It protects us from doing things that are going to cause us to feel negative emotions. And let's say something happens like I'm in a public place and I'm using the bathroom and I don't realize the door's open, right? If I notice that, that healthy shame is going to is going to come up and I'm going to want to close that door. And as soon as that door is closed, whatever shame came up in me that made me want to close that door dissipates because I took care of the problem. That healthy shame is there to help us to stay within those bounds and once we get back into those bounds or the inside those boundaries where we're comfortable, it goes away. That's healthy shame. Toxic shame is different. Toxic shame doesn't help us in any way, shape, or form. And sadly, it doesn't go away until we completely heal the wound 
that is causing it. Since toxic shame never really goes away, it's almost like it's part of our identity. It makes us feel ashamed, embarrassed, unworthy, inadequate, all of the time. And the worst thing about it is that toxic shame makes us feel those things when we're doing things that are normal. What's really frustrating about toxic shame is how it makes a person feel bad for doing things that other people do without second thought. For example, if you want to be your authentic self, right? And you're in a group of people and you just want to be you. The thought of exposing yourself, your true self, your authenticity will bring up toxic shame. If you like somebody, and this could be even just a friendship, right? And you like and care about this person, you respect this person, and you want to be close to this person, toxic shame will come up as if feelings are wrong. It makes you feel like your feelings are bad. And it makes you think that you're not allowed to have those feelings and that you're not allowed to be yourself. It basically ruins your life. To sum it up, toxic shame is like having a self-made inner prison where your authentic self and everything that's even good about yourself is locked inside and it's not allowed to come out because it doesn't feel worthy. It doesn't feel enough. It doesn't feel safe to allow those pieces of you to come out. So it really just creates so much inner turmoil and external turmoil because it leads to social anxiety. If you don't feel enough, if you don't feel comfortable in your own skin, if you don't feel like you're allowed to be yourself, whatever that is, right? Then when you're in social situations, it's going to be really hard. Social anxiety is a symptom. It's not like, it's not the root cause of something. The root cause of social anxiety is toxic shame. That's why anybody that battles social anxiety, rather than dealing with the symptoms of social anxiety, like feeling comfortable in your own skin, having the ability to say no when you want to say no, speaking your mind, all of those things are external symptoms that are really hard. And I know in the Western world, we tend to address symptoms of issues, even if physical illness, we attack the symptoms with medicine, rarely going after the, the root cause. It's the same thing with social anxiety. People try all these different ways to attack those symptoms, when if they really gave focus to the root cause of toxic shame, they could eliminate their social anxiety. Because when you know you're enough, when you know that you're allowed to be, do, say, think, and feel, whatever comes up inside of you, then you're able to do that around anybody because you don't have to pretend, you don't have to hide, you don't have to put on an appearance as if you're something you're not because you own who you are and you like who you are and you don't need anyone else's stamp of approval to be you. So the root cause of it is toxic shame. And speaking of which, anybody that's battling social anxiety or toxic shame, you might want to check out my 12 week workshop where together in a small group of about 10 people with myself, we work through the symptoms of complex PTSD, which include toxic shame and social anxiety. So I just wanted to put that out there. The link is always in the description box below. So for anyone that needs more assistance other than videos, make sure you check out that link. Okay. So I think we kind of can see that toxic shame sucks. <laughs> toxic shame can just steal the joy from your life and keep you prisoner to misery. So the real question and the most valuable part to me of any video that talks about the symptoms of complex PTSD is when we get to the part where we ask, okay, I got this. I have this inside, I notice this, it resonates with me, now what? What do I do so that toxic shame doesn't keep on ruining my life? I'm gonna give you some tips that really help. And the tips I give are a little bit different than tips that you find out there on YouTube. For example, 
when I was doing some research, I came across some videos that had really good tips, right? Some of them, for example, were to recognize that you are imperfect just like everyone else. Knowing that other people are imperfect, no one else you know, it worries about their imperfections that you can be that way as well. Another valuable tip that I saw was strengthen your self-identity. Get to know who you really are and just be that. Recognize that that's you and you have every right to be that. Those are awesome tips. However, anyone that's gone through trauma, anyone that has complex PTSD, anyone that has been through long-term narcissistic abuse, those everyday tips don't work because they deal with the logical part of our brain. Our logical mind can say, oh, I'm imperfect. <laughs> I'm allowed to make mistakes. I don't have to worry. I don't have to hide my mistakes. Everyone has mistakes. Logically, we can say that. Same thing with our self-identity. Logically, we can say, oh, I know who I am. This is who I am. I'm allowed to be that way. You know, I'm allowed to show and expose who I am, just like everyone else. No one else hides it. Therefore, I shouldn't have to hide it either. So again, our logical mind, I'm pointing to the left side of my brain because that's where the logic is. Our logical mind can say that, but anyone that has been through trauma knows that that logic does not have enough power to work through the emotions that come up when we're feeling drenched in toxic shame, when we're having emotional flashbacks. That logic has zero power over our ability to work through those emotions and overcome them. And the reason that is, is because trauma does not reside in the logical side of our brain. It's not, uh, take, we can't process and release it from that part of our brain. In fact, when you're having emotional flashbacks, it's your logical side of your brain that short circuits and shuts down. So if you've been trying to overcome toxic shame and you've watched all these videos on tips that try to get you to see it logically and you're wondering why you're not getting anywhere, it's because you've been through trauma and there is a different way that people that have been through trauma have to heal and overcome what they've been through. So here are the tips that really help. The first thing is to start becoming aware of your toxic shame. So sometimes we've had shame for so long and it is an overwhelming feeling. It is an overwhelming crippling feeling that either makes people, depending on their, their trauma response, it either makes people want to run and hide or they completely disconnect and their body's there, but emotionally, they've checked out. So it is a very overpowering emotion. And it's, and because it's been such a big part of our life for a long time, it's in our subconscious mind, which means it's very easy to be provoked into toxic shame. We don't need to try and think about it to make it happen. In fact, it happens when we wish it wouldn't because it's in old programs that automatically bring up toxic shame. So the first step is to start looking for it. Start noticing it. Notice the toxic shame. Notice when you're feeling it. Whenever you're feeling unworthy, not good enough, bad, as if you need to hide or run, or you think that if people are gonna reject you or abandon you because there's something wrong with you, well, that's shame. Start noticing how often it comes up in your life. That's the first step. When we start noticing it, we start transferring our awareness from our subconscious mind to our conscious mind. We start bringing awareness, I should say, it makes more sense. Uh, we start bringing awareness to our conscious mind. We can't change it until it's there, until it's in that part of our mind. So step one, start noticing it. Track it on a daily basis. How many times did I feel shame today? Review at the end of the day with no judgment. The second step is to, and this is kind of hard for some people. Some people hate that shame and they like want to stifle it or they want to shove it out of their body. They don't want to feel it at all. 
The problem is, is that the more we resist that emotion or that feeling, the more it persists, the more it chases us, the more it bangs on your soul, demanding your love, care, and attention. So the second step, once you start noticing it all the time, is don't hate, validate. Validate that shame. What would that sound like? I can pretty much bet that if you're battling toxic shame, whenever you felt not enough as a child, your caregiver wasn't there for you. Your caregiver didn't say, hey, don't worry. You're, you're an awesome person. Everybody makes mistakes. This isn't a big deal. No, your caregiver didn't do that. They probably made you feel like the most horrible being that ever existed. They probably made you feel like you were different than your siblings. They're great. They never mess up, but you are the problem. They probably pointed out your mistakes so much that now as an adult, when your toxic shame comes up without realizing it, we often treat ourselves the way abusive people in our past treated us. So sometimes we talk to that shame very harshly. I hate that. I can't believe I feel this. I hate myself. I suck. There's something wrong with me. Look, why is this why is this here? Why is this a part of me? But when we talk like that, we only make shame bigger. We, it only demands more of our attention. What it really needs is validation. And validation is talking to yourself compassionately, lovingly, acknowledging why that shame is there. So it might sound something like I see that shame. I see it, I feel it in my body. And I know why it's there. Because for so many years, my whole childhood, I was made to feel like there was something wrong with me. Or I was punished every time I was authentic. I was yelled at, ignored, silent treatment, or shamed for being authentic. So now every time I wanna be authentic, I'm scared. I, need, I feel like I need to hide. I understand why this is hard for me. It makes sense. Anyone that had that kind of childhood, it makes sense that it's going to be hard. So that's what healthy, compassionate validation sounds like. Do you talk to yourself like that when you are experiencing toxic shame? That's the second step. So the third step, now that you've validated it, right? You've, when we validate our emotions, we are basically allowing them to be there. We understand why they're there. We're not rejecting or abandoning them. We're allowing them to be there. The third step is about self-love. And it's about giving yourself the love and compassion that you needed as a child whenever you felt shame. Whatever you needed to be told as a child is how you should talk to yourself now when you feel that shame. So start evaluating how you're showing up for yourself. Are you abandoning yourself the way your parents emotionally abandoned you? Are you abusing yourself the way your parents verbally and emotionally abused you? Once you notice it, you can start to change it. Once your shame feels seen, heard, loved, cared about, and safe, it starts to loosen its grip over your life. And that's when you start to really feel like you and allow yourself to be you even in public, even with people you don't know, because you have that self-love, that self-connection. You're not abandoning yourself anymore. So let me know if you try these tips. I would love to hear how it goes. Make sure you comment in the description box below because it really inspires and encourages other people as well. And again, if you want personal assistance and you can't afford face-to-face -face coaching, you should check out my 12-week Breakthrough Complex PTSD workshop. The next one starts June 1st. It's from 6 to 8 Eastern Time. I would be honored to be invited on your healing journey. So again, the link to that is in the description box below.